everybody. Welcome to another Tuesdays with Forward. I'm so happy to be here with all of you this evening. I'm Jen Gray, Artistic Director of Forward. Wonderful to see Scott Hayden, our fabulous marketing director and producer. And I'm thrilled to have um, this evening's two guests, the co-directors of Art and Lit Lab, JoLynn Rhoda and Rita May. Welcome. It's so nice to have you both here. Um, for those who are listening at home, just want to remind you that if you're listening live, um, you can leave comments or questions in the chat on YouTube or on Facebook. Scott will make sure we see those. Um, we'd love to hear from you. And uh, yeah, so Rita and Jolyn, um, tell me a little bit. Um, I mean, I know a bit about Arts and, Art and Lit Lab, but a lot of folks listening may not. So tell us about the role that you play in the community. Thanks so much for having us, Jen. This is really exciting to have this opportunity to share a little bit about our our story and what we're, we've been doing here in Madison. Um, so we've been around for almost five years now, and we started in a little space on Winnebago Street, um, really just very grassroots, you know, all volunteer run. And, you know, our mission is to support the visual, literary, and performing arts all together, and also arts education, and try to make it more accessible uh, to the community. And so we just sort of burst out um, with a whole bunch of programs and that, you know, they were, you know, thankfully embraced by the community. So we've been um, growing very quickly and holding in normal times, um, you know, over 200 events per year, as well as year round arts education. And, um, you know, we're extremely excited uh, to have been able to move into a new space this year that's going to allow yeah. us to continue to grow and bring more art to more community members. Yeah, so um, we'll get into COVID in a moment, but 2020 is a really big year for your organization. Tell, tell us more about, about this new building and um, some of the, the broader impact that you planned around it. Rita May, do you wanna take that one? Okay. Um, uh, yeah, this is, it's been a crazy year, but we are so excited to move into our new space um, at 111 South Livingston Street, because we were in this very small, about 2000 square foot space that wasn't very accessible, um, didn't have parking. And so we were starting to joke with 200 events a year. Our job was mainly moving chairs, <laughs> was like putting the chairs down, putting the chairs up. Um, so now we have a space where the arts can kind of intersect and interact. Um, but they, mm. there's also a space like that's our uh, downstairs, the that's the exhibition gallery looking towards the performance gallery. So we will have a space um, where you can go and view the art um, in this space. And then you can see concerts and poetry readings and dramatic performances in the performance space. Then we have a mezzanine that's dedicated to the literary arts. So it's a dedicated literary arts center in Madison because we have a really thriving writing community. And since mm -hmm. the writer's place is closed, um, there hasn't been a spot that was outside of academia that was really designated just for writers. So we have a great small press library up there, beautiful shelves that were just installed and our intern has just shelved all the books <laughs> uh, we'll be able to have our workshops there um, so we'll be able to have a much more robust workshop um, schedule for adults in particular um, mm -hmm. and then we have the education studio and artist studios on the third floor and that's really exciting uh, i feel like the kids kind of get the penthouse suite of the of the building it's just a beautiful gorgeous large open sunny space um, and then there are four artist studios with um, affordable rates for artists to work in. And it's been a real pleasure, even with COVID, to go in there and see them working. They're just working all the time. Um, and that's, yeah, it, it's felt so uh, healing and energizing during this time to see that. So I, I feel like that's a real privilege. And uh, I can't wait for more people to get a going to come in and see the gallery and then walk by the studios and right. have their kids taking classes on the third floor, going to readings and concerts. Um, we have a lot to look forward to. Yeah, that sounds fantastic. So 
Um, you know, this fall was the designated time for this this space to to open to the public, right? So, um, when COVID hit uh, our community in March, how has that? Um, in what ways has that impacted all of your planning and and offerings? Jillian, you want to take this one? Sure. Yeah. I mean, as it has been difficult for all our arts organizations and everybody, you know, in the community, um, it certainly, um, you know us off our game for a little bit because we had this idea that we would be having a grand opening and uh, being able to have you know all of those events that we normally would have in our space um, uh, take place in this newer bigger space we, we thought this would be a really big year and instead you know we've had to change what we're doing but we've been able to maintain our programming by using you know platforms like this live streaming um, you know the most heartbreaking part, I think, really was having to cancel our summer camps. We had 44 wonderful camps pl planned with different teaching artists, um, you know, and, and so having to move to all virtual programming from that and, and leave the education studio empty that was supposed to be filled with, you know, young artists, um, you know, that was difficult for us. And, you know, it's amazing. Our, our arts um, education and outreach director, Bo, just really pivoted and started doing wonderful videos with the artists and now is going to have a whole fall series of um, workshops, as well as continuing our outreach program that we do with um, different partners in the community uh, to provide free arts enrichment uh, to youth who otherwise might not have access to it. So um, we found a way, um, just like all creatives are doing, you know, finding a way to still get our art out there and, you um, yeah. Rita, maybe you want to talk about some of the other programs that we've been able to continue online? <clears throat> yeah. Um, we've had uh, write-ins have been one of our core programs, and it's just a way to give writers a community to get together, write. And um, we were doing those monthly, and um, I was excited to really have a space where we might be able to do it more often. And then one of our volunteers said, well, maybe we could try doing Zoom. And I thought it was, at first, I thought it sounded like a terrible idea. Um, <laughs> but it worked so well. It's been a great way to grow the community. And we're able to do it every week. And we do it in the morning, which I'm more of a morning writer than the other ones were in the evening. So, I mean, I think it's been small things like that that have really helped us see more potential for our programs. Um, so those are things that we're going to keep even after we return to normal programming, whenever that is and whatever that ends up looking like. But now we'll be able to really, you know, reach out to a lot more people. We've been streaming our readings. Um, we had a couple of poets come in because they just had brand new books. And so they came into the space and they filmed themselves reading a poem in front of the new small press library and had a little glass of champagne. And so we are taking advantage of, um, technology that way to reach people and, and mm -hmm. that's been exciting and we're going to offer a lot more workshops starting mostly we have one coming up this fall that's called um, reflect and restore through writing mm -hmm. and that's a New York writer who is able to teach the class online not something we would have been able to do before so we're excited and then there'll be a lot more added on to that too so if someone who's listening is um, a locally based artist, whether it's a, a, a writer, performer, visual artist, and they're interested in learning more about how they could get involved with, with the offerings at Artlet Lab, um, what, what, how, what would you tell them? Like, what, what's the best way for them to start to get engaged with what you're doing? Yeah, the, the best thing to do is just to send us an email or give me a call. So our email is hello at artlitlab.org. And um, hello. <laughs> <laughs> and we have so many opportunities. We've been doing live stream um, concerts and we're going to continue to do that, um, which has been great. And just like Rita May said, we've actually seen larger audiences as far as views anyway, um, you know, online than the number of people that might come in for a ticketed performance. So that's been great. Um, and we're going to be having, you know, our transition to things like we had to cancel the Isthmus Jazz Fest and we had to cancel our, our Strolling Outdoor Jazz Series, but instead we'll be doing more live streams again and a, a live stream version of Strolling Middleton. And, um, you know, the exhibition series is continuing, you know, now that we've opened our galleries. So there's opportunities for artists who want to show. Um, so to submit proposals for exhibitions. 
to reach out to Rita May um, about reading. Um, we also, as things start to reopen, will be looking forward to sharing the space. And, and that was really why we did this project. Um, you know, we do have our own programs, but so much of what we do is really just making it available for artists and other arts organizations and community groups that want to use the space. And so we're very excited to see what the community brings into the new arts and literature laboratory. Well, on the uh, on the subject of, of programs and projects, um, you know, those who've been paying very close attention to Forward Theater's um, page and social media may already know about this, but uh, we haven't done a really big splashy announcement yet, but we're partnering together, Art and Lit Lab and Forward Theater, um, on a project for later this season. So those who've been with us for a while may remember that back in 2012, we produced um, the play or series of plays, 44 plays for America's, for 44 presidents. Um, and as part of that, or in conjunction with that, we helped put together a really cool art exhibit where we worked with over 44 local visual artists for that one, um, who all got together and each of them drew a president's name out of a hat and went and created a piece of visual art inspired by that president or that presidency. And that, uh, exhibition hung in the Playhouse Gallery for I think two months in the fall of 2012. And then it went and hung in the, the then Sundance Theater Gallery for a couple of months through inauguration day uh, in January of um, 2013. And so when we decided a while back that we were gonna be one of the world premiere sites for uh, the new play, 45 Plays for America's First Ladies, we definitely wanted to do that again because that exhibition was so cool and so interesting. Um, really just an exciting companion piece to the production. And when we started thinking about um, in what ways we might like to um, shift around or adapt the way that exhibit was put together last time, you came up as a perfect partner. Um, because of your ties uh, to artists throughout the community. Um, and the submission window or the, the submit your interest window um, is currently open through October 1st. And it's been brought in to include um, writers and poets as well as um, visual artists in different media. Um, so we're really excited about it. I mean, obviously like everything else in the arts, this is yet another thing that has adapted somewhat to COVID. The production originally was going to um, be running this November and we were going to be announcing this exhibition at the uh, beginning of the summer um, for people to submit to have it up this fall. And obviously we knew pretty early on that that was going to have to change. We've now moved the uh, production to next May. So we've moved the exhibition to the spring as well. Um, so that gave us a little more time, which is great. Uh, but we're really uh, looking for um, for folks to, to submit. So um, Jalyn, you guys are gonna kind of be um, organizing the artists who are participating in this. Uh, do you wanna tell folks a little more about how that's going to work? Yeah, I mean, we're hoping that so many artists from all across Wisconsin will participate in this. So please, fill out the submission form. It's a very simple form. We really scaled it back to make it easy to do. Um, you know, we would just really want different um, media to be represented. And as um, Jen also mentioned, we were so excited to add the literary arts this year, um, which seemed like the perfect fit since we're arts and literature laboratory. Yeah. And so we love doing projects that bring visual and literary artists together. And, um, you know, we even love for people to collaborate. They could be teams that um, do work together to take a poem and make a broadside or, or some other treatment of it that will be able to be exhibited in the show. So, so excited to see what creative um, solutions people come up to this challenge, you know. Um, and also, this is an amazing time to be doing this, right, in this election cycle. So I think that people will do some pretty amazing work. Um, yeah. And so and once we've selected the book, we will um, do the same thing that you did in 2012. We will be assigning people randomly. I don't know if we'll literally have a hat. <laughs> we could do that, that would be fun um, for people to then find out what surprise first lady they get to work with, so. Yes. Um, yeah, and I'm I'm excited for a number of reasons. I mean, we, we did a partnership um, for a poetry exhibition with a different production we'd done a number of years ago. And so it's, it's fun to combine that sort of um, corollary literary programming with the corollary 
visual arts programming that we've done in the past all under one umbrella. And it really suits this particular piece very well because it's such an eclectic evening of theater. Um, and who knows, with the, with the production date bumped back to May, it might be 46 plays for America's First Ladies by then. We don't know. Very possible. Um, so yeah, we're we're uh, encouraging folks. Uh, if if you are a, a visual or literary artist, or if you know someone who is, they can find that um, submission form on Forward's website on the forty five plays for America's First Ladies page. Um, and a couple other things that we're we're doing differently. We anticipate having the exhibition um, move to a few different locations. Um, so that it'll it'll have the, the widest possible exposure. Um, we've also, thanks to the Madison Arts Commission, secured a little bit of funding so that we're able to give um, at least a modest stipend to every participating artist. We're um, we're seeking some additional funding, and if we if we secure that, we'll be able to increase that um, stipend even further. But we're really glad that it's it's not nothing. Um, and uh, yeah, I, it it could be a really a really fun thing. Fingers crossed that people are able to go back to the theater to see this play, go go back to galleries to observe all the works of art. But one way or another, we will make them accessible to everybody. We've I think we've all shown our ability to pivot in these uh, very unusual times. Um, so as you think about, um, let's not even think about the fall of 2020 anymore. <laughs> we can't. I think many of us kind of want to fast forward a few months at least. But as you're thinking about um, 2021, what are some of the the things that you're really looking forward to um, in terms of your organization? Rita May, do you want to grab, jump in first? Um, well, uh, before we jump past fall 2020 too much, we have a, our first annual Midwest Video Poetry Ooh. Fest, which we're super excited about. Yeah. And it will be online. Um, and so we're learning, we get over 1600 submissions from all around the world. So <clears throat> we're still screening those, but um, those will be, um, we'll have two nights of screenings, uh, November 19th and 20th, I believe, check our website. And um, so we're, we've gotten some wonderful work and super excited to see those genres come together. Um, we've had some great work from Wisconsin and um, Italy, Africa, all over the place. So that's going to be exciting. And we're looking forward next year to that being in person. So um, and <clears throat> learning from that. And then we have, you know, just going back to our reading series. Um, it's It's been wonderful having them streamed, but you really do miss that feeling of being in the in the room with the poet and the conversations that can take place afterwards. Um, yeah. Um, so we have that and our increased workshops um, and just being in that space and expanding our small press library. Uh, there's just, like I said, so much to look forward to next year. Jolyn, what am I missing? There's all the exhibits. Um, it's all of that, you know, we're just really looking forward to, I know things will never be exactly the same, you know, everything's always changing. And there are things about this that I think are going to make it better for us in the future, like continuing to realize that we can use technology to make our programs accessible for people who maybe couldn't get there because of transportation issues, mm -hmm. um, and mobility issues, things like that. So, so there are good things that will come out of this, but bringing people together again, that's definitely the heart of it. Um, we created this space as a community art center. And so while it's wonderful, we're able to stay connected in these virtual ways, we really miss that sense of community and that just human touch of, of being in that space and, and you know witnessing this art together. So I think that's definitely what we're looking forward to. Yes, yes, all of that, <laughs> making art together and in communion together is um, something I think we're all missing pretty keenly right now. but. But you're right also to focus on the ways that things will change for the better because of what we're learning. There's no question that for all of us art makers in all of our different genres, this pandemic has really shaken us out of all of the pathways in which we have normally done our work. And um, it really lets you take that moment and kind of 
re-examine all of our processes and all the things that we do because it's the way we do them. And um, yeah, I, I, I do think we're all learning a lot about the way we run our organizations and the way we provide services to our community and how we can do that better. I mean, we're about to uh, open our first production of the season and it's, you know, we're a live theater company and we're about to release an actual play that is happening in two dimensions. And um, I think it's gonna be pretty cool. I really hope that we're able to be back and rehearsing in person again by the next show, but seeing what we can do with this has been really exhilarating and inspiring and it will impact the ways we work together and, and then share that work down the road. So never let a good crisis go to waste, right? <laughs> um, ooh, Celia has a great question. Do you have ways for your artists to meet and spend time together? Yeah, well, so we have been doing that through Zoom. As Rita may mention, we've had that for writers. Um, we're hoping to have some you know, virtual artist um, talks so to, you can in interact. We are actually thinking about um, having a day or two, maybe a weekend, when people can come into the studios this fall and sign up for slots so that it's all safe and socially distant. But so you can um, have meet and greet, um, you know, basically gallery night um, in a social distance way um and get to know the wonderful we have six artists right now working um at all and hopefully um two or three more will be joining them this fall for a while um while our education studio isn't in use and uh you know so we'd lo love for people to be able to come and see their work in person as long as we can keep it safe for everybody um and we usually have a, a crit group going and i think it'd be wonderful to have some some things like that and we've had musician town halls to try to give people um, a chance to come together so so definitely you know we're trying to do this virtually as much as possible but um as soon as we're able to in person we will be bringing all of that back yeah bringing artists together is, is such a a valuable service for this community and and you co-hosted the mayoral forum on the arts this spring right that was another really exciting thing. I, I loved seeing that that was happening, um, reminding everybody to keep the arts as you know an important issue to know what our elected representatives think about. And my goodness, now m much more so than than ever, um, given the way COVID has been impacting the field. Um, so that's really great. Um, anything else that you want our, our listeners uh, to know, things that they uh, should come and check out, whether it's online now or in person in the future? We still do have volunteer opportunities. Uh, you can check our website and um, we're a member organization, so you can join all, which not everybody knows. Um, so there's different membership levels if you want to support all that way. That's a great way to do it. Um, yeah, there's just, uh, there's a lot of information on our website. We're always updating it, but um, check there and then follow us on social media. Um, yeah, our, our calendar is on the website, but, you know, subscribing to the events on Facebook and things like that's probably a great way to stay informed. Fantastic. And we'll be reopening for gallery hours this Saturday. So Saturday, our yeah. second set of <laughs> exhibitions will be opening. Um, we're very excited. They'll be up for two months, but um, they are our rescheduled all prize winners. So they are recent uh, MFA graduate students, and these are their MFA thesis shows. Uh, so we hope people will stop by if they can. So we're open from noon to five, Thursday through Saturday, just for limited hours right now. And people can also make an appointment to come in if that doesn't work. But, um, right. Yeah, that's wonderful. Well, I, I want to not only um, thank you both for, for joining me this evening. It was really wonderful to hear about um, everything that you've got going on. I'm so excited to working together more closely in the coming months as we get this exhibit put together. Um, but also to everyone who's listening, I just wanted to let you all know, and thanks for coming back, Scott, for our big announcement. This is going to be our final episode of Tuesdays with Forward. I'm I'm just imagining the you know heartfelt you know groans and moans of sorrow happening out there all around. Um, this was a uh, something that we really started um, doing on a, a, I won't say a whim, but in a just sort of, you know, quick response to what was going on literally in that first week of uh, the shutdown back in March um, as a way to keep in contact with 
with our patrons, we very quickly expanded it as a way to shine a spotlight on artists and arts organizations throughout the community as we all grappled with the impact of COVID and all of the ways in which um, we are adapting and trying to get the word out and, and just promote the creativity and flexibility for, for the arts in this community. Um, but we've been doing it every week for like six months now. Um, and with our season launching this Friday and, and many of our fellow arts organizations now pivoting to, I'm not gonna call it our normal seasons, but our adapted seasons, um, this felt like a really organic time to close up this particular project. Certainly our energies um, have plenty of other places to go. Um, if you're a forward fan, we will be continuing with Mike's picks um, for the indefinite uh, future. We obviously have our Theater Forward podcast that has been going for a year and a half now. That will be continuing all of our sharing of social media, um, not just for our own organization, but continuing to promote what all of the organizations we've talked to um, through Tuesdays with Forward are doing. And so we'll continue to share information about Art Lit Lab and everyone else that we've been talking to. So um, everyone who's listening, I wanna thank you. We, you know, 23 episodes, six months, thousands of, of views of these. And um, it, it really has been a, a pleasure and a privilege to, uh, to be talking about the arts in our community during this particular moment in time. So thanks for that. Thank you, Rita Mae and Jolyn. It's been a, a, a real delight speaking with both of you. Thank you, Scott, for producing all of these and getting so good at all the fancy bells and whistles as the time went on. It's been fun. And, uh, yeah, it was great. Yeah, thank you. And uh, it was wonderful. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. Stay safe and um, come check out the seasons that we're all offering. Support the arts. <laughs>